43, your location, 43. Shooter and Sherman, dispatcher. 43, have a call opposite 120 Isabella. Apparently some object left in the center of the road. Can you check it out? 120 Isabella. 847. Okay, 43. Scott, 40 out here, Burbank and Shepard, re-school crossing detail. Every five seconds, somewhere in metropolitan Toronto, a call for the police. An accident, a child hurt, help needed. The great bulk of police work is undramatic, routine. Somebody has forgotten a door key and needs to be let into her house. The neighbor's children ran over my lawn, too. When more than a million human beings live together in the same place, they need protection. Yes, code 44, 204 Sheeton Street, Rita Sordley's outside. 1053. P for Charlie, 39927. In the complex life of a modern city, the main job of the police is simply ensuring that order prevails. If men were always virtuous, there would be no need of law, or of the force which maintains the law. In a world where violence frequently erupts, the police must learn to use force cunningly to combat it. The police must also learn to use weapons to protect themselves and the public against armed criminals. What does the work you do, Sergeant Inglis, involve? It involves the preparation of plans of scenes of crime for the courts. Police work also requires science and even artistry. At headquarters, there is a variety of specialists, like Sergeant Morris Inglis of the Criminal Investigation Branch. I've been doing this work for about 14 years, and uh, I've, whereas I find it very interesting, but at times uh, the tragedy of the scenes uh, does affect me. What sort of tragedy do you mean? Well, uh, murder scenes. For instance, there was one murder that happened on Christmas Eve, 1945. And the Crown Attorney, after the preliminary, called me and he said, I want you to make a plan of this uh, place, rooming house. I want you to show me the front entrance, the back entrance, the entrance on the second floor. I want you to show me room 22, 20, 18, 9, also the kitchen, the stairs leading up from the uh, second floor to the kitchen, where the man walked by the stairs. Now, I thought to myself, that's going to involve uh, work. So then I thought I'd better make a model. I have it here. Would you like to see it? Yeah. This was uh, is a wooden model of the scene we call the rooming house murder. It happened on Christmas Eve. An old gentleman was returning, a watchman returning home. 
two men accosted him and brought him up to this uh, room 20. Now, when the court, when the case went to court, each witness was called and he had to be able to describe what he could see and where he was at the time. This show, in plastic shows you entering the front door and the stairs, of course, immediately in front of you. By turning it around, you can see through the back and see the head of the stairs and uh, he's arriving then at the ground floor level of where he was let in by the landlady. She thought at the time he was just a drunk returning with them, you see. They were supporting and so on. Then he went in through this door and along the corridor and he was seen by somebody in the kitchen. The kitchen is marked here and as you see by the model, the kitchen is directly opposite the stairway. So we can tell exactly the person in the kitchen could view the person going up the stairs. Then he arrives on uh, the uh, third floor landing and was taken into room 20. One witness was in room 22. He heard something. The room opposite number 21 heard the scuffling outside the room so he could say something. He could describe something to the court. And room 18 also he heard some screaming and some noise and a blow was being struck. And he could. So then that shows the court where each witness was, and this, of course, is the room in detail, showing the bed where the uh, victim was found, and a chair, and a simple chair and a dresser in the room. Now, that case, that uh, helped the court very much. It would take a lot of words to describe that, and, of course, some of the witnesses were a sort of simple type of people. It, they could not describe, whereas they could point the finger and said, I was in room 22. Okay. Nightfall. For most people, the time of rest and ease. But for the constable on a night shift, the calls are constant. For darkness can be the cloak of crime. In the night, certain spots, known as likely places for trouble to originate, are kept under close scrutiny by the police. The policeman's aim is not just to pursue those who may have broken the law, but to be around, to prevent trouble if possible. the hustlers then on the streets we have a large uh, <clears throat> we have we, we have quite a few of them but they all seem to hang around the one area down here Dundas and Jarvis and Pembroke and Dundas and George and Dundas and uh, all around there but they're uh, they go they come and they go you'll see them there for three or four months and finally they get knocked off so many times that I guess they just give it up for a bad job and move on to Windsor or Montreal we get a lot of them down from Montreal Actually, there, there are, are, are two that do cause the trouble. Them and uh, the, uh, let's see the, say the sellers and the buyers. The fellows prowling around trying to pick them up and uh, then uh, the other big night complaint is noisy parties. 
some of them are people uh, just having a good time, but some neighbor sees fit to complain against them. Well, uh, I like to have a good party myself at home, and uh, I'd probably take offense at uh, a policeman knocking on my door and say, all oh, your guests got to go home. Somebody thinks they're a little bit too boisterous and they can't sleep, they got to work, or they've got two or three kids that can't sleep. Well, you got to look at the other citizen's view, too, the fellow that's complaining. 61, Jameson, south of King. Uh, you get a call, uh, one of these calls, a, an ambulance call, or a woman going to have a baby, we'll say, up on Winchester Street. And you get there, and uh, she hasn't had it yet, but she's going to come close to having it. And uh, she's just about ready to go. Can't wait for the ambulance. She has to get to the doctor. So you have no alternative. You get her in the car, and you start going. I remember I had a call like that one night, boy, and I couldn't get to that hospital fast enough. <laughs> I got her there just ahead of when the, uh, she had it. I got her in there all right. But some of the boys aren't as lucky. What's the uh, uh, toughest situation you've ever been in? Well, I think the uh, the toughest ones that I have ever run across, that, that I have felt that I'd rather be somewhere else, are these street fights. There's a lot of stuff you'd just as soon walk away with, from, but you have to you have to go in, even though you feel sometimes, well, I'll probably lose this one. Fortunately, I haven't lost any yet, but uh, no doubt I'll I'll get mine sooner or later. Last night we pulled up to the corner and five or six standing there in the corner, uh, the corner obstructing the sidewalk. Ask them to move along, all but one does. So I went over to the fellow and asked him his name, gave me his name, where he lived, and where he worked. He answered all these questions and I suggested to him that it would be best if he went into a restaurant or went on home or went somewhere else but not to hang around that corner because we do have a problem there. So he didn't agree with me and uh, I cautioned him again regarding this. Next thing I know, bang, drives me right in the side of the face. I thought a truck had hit me. And of course, uh, we can't always come out on top, but uh, you've got to make a good try. Of course, we had a, quite a tussle there. My partner and I finally subdued him, got him in the car took them to the station, but some of them, they just fight all the way. This fella did. He didn't want to let up even when he got in the car. He kept it up. And, but nevertheless, he wouldn't be disturbing anybody for the next 30 days. 1228 Gerard East, a necessary noise from 131. Uh, of course, there are other, other calls you do have to hurry to. Bank alarms. There's always some web-footed cashier stomping on an alarm somewhere, and, and uh, you race up there, and you get in the bank, and nothing. Some of them think it's a big joke, but it's not a big joke because the guys that are going there are in a hurry, they're driving a car, they, they uh, are in a certain dangerous uh, part themselves. Uh, they're, they're, uh, an accident could happen, you could have a blowout, but nevertheless you have to try and get there as fast as you can in the event that there has been a holdup. Then when you get there and they, they laugh, they think it's a big joke. Well, the guys, two guys in the car might have three or four kids. They wouldn't think it a big joke if Dad didn't come home that night, would they? Barrett, Sorry. five and six post, four fifteen for lunch. Relieve three, three extra, three, four fifteen, and six extra from the twelve to one o'clock. Davis, Garner, scout eleven, four fifteen for lunch. Sergeant, Sergeant, scout eleven, four fifteen for lunch. Pay attention to four and seventeen posts from Jarvis to Bay. Relief shot, left turn. The police aren't just concerned with lawbreakers, but with ordinary citizens in very ordinary troubles. Someone's little boy is lost. Someone's mislaid a raincoat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you phone, give number four station a call and ask them if they have it over there, but we certainly haven't got it here. We just have a pen number. 113 to the garage for inspection. Time yeah. to take 46 Pardon me, yes, sir. Can I help you? Yes, please. A constant stream of questions, demands, inquiries. A lawyer just starting out in practice, his clients in jail awaiting trial. Could the police help him out by giving him details of the case? You could see what they had to say about it. Was he ready?
Canterbury's making all the noise here. Eh? How is Canterbury getting some coffee? Coffee? Yeah. What's your name? My name is Curry. You got any money on you? Yeah. Let's see it. You got a dime? Oh, yeah, I want coffee. Is it coffee time? I want to get some Well, if you have some money, we'll see what we can do. Oh, sorry. Do you want to get any coffee? Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We have an all night. Those fellows usually think it out to the shopbreakers, but the petty thieves, they're the wine hounds and the rubbies. They're, uh, they're just a, a general nuisance. They, they uh, steal stuff from cars and lots of petty thefts. Whatever they can pick up, they figure it'll make them a buck. And then they go down to some booze can and uh, sell it to the first guy that they can peddle it off on. Anything as so long as they can get the price of a couple of bottles of grape. And uh, then if they haven't got enough to get a couple of bottles of the, the wine, the grape, They'll uh, go and get the big economy size bottle of rub. That car 512 Avenue Road, the main floor. Truck and the inside fighting with the lady. Three o'clock. Why do you always search them then when you pick them up in the back alleys? You never know what you're going to find on them. You never know. You could, you could find a, a gun that they've lifted out of somebody's car. They might have a knife. You, you should. You always do search every prisoner you put in the car because you never know you can't you can no more tell a shop breaker or a murderer or a, or a, a rapist uh, one from another people are people there's there's no set feature on anybody that brands them as one particular thing you, you just can't tell them nothing surprises you as far as human nature or, or, or what people will do nothing at all I'd, I'd I'd believe almost anything of what the the human race would do my camper up here, will you please? I haven't got it. It's all at home. It ain't me. I'm telling you, I did it at a that guy. I never even seen him since I left the police station. And that's the truth. Wait, come here. Why don't I get to pee my What do we want him? And, and she says, I'm doing it. And some guy jumped him. And I was I'm getting up to pee my They're going to take him over? I'm okay, Joel, go ahead with that. Uh, Stop at home so I can get a pair of shoes. I just give up the corn. <laughs> That's enough. Full house. Right up the front. Lots of what we got in here. It's pretty cool. Uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It may be a serious crime, it may be merely a misdemeanor. If you're unwise enough to spend your evening at a bootlegger's, you may get swept up in a raid. And if you can't raise bail, you'll have to spend the night as a guest of the city. Under the cover of night, more serious things may be happening. Things the police are powerless to prevent. Human nature being what it is, it is inevitable that some men will commit crimes. There will be violence, but where it will strike or whose life it will touch, no one can predict.
another day and in the city a million human beings go about their business When you have so many people living in one place, the attempt to keep the peace cannot always succeed. Earlier on this day, the police were called to an address on this street. Neighbors had complained that there was a noisy party in progress. The people at the party were taken into custody on liquor charges. The house was visited again later by the police. When making the arrests, they had noticed bloodstains and signs of great disorder. In the course of a search, they discovered the body of a woman under the cellar stairs. had been alive the day before. Was it natural death, accidental death, manslaughter, or murder? When it is suspected that a death has occurred by violence, it is the duty of the homicide squad to gather any evidence that may help to prove whether or not foul play has occurred. Only society, represented by a jury, in the end, can pass judgment on a man. It is the duty of the police to provide the Crown with as complete and accurate a picture as possible of what they find. Justice cannot be based on hearsay, suspicion, or accusation. It must rest on fact. <laughs> Thank you. 
police find evidence which is thought by the coroner's inquest to warrant a trial. The suspects, if known, will be brought before the courts. And in the trial, a measurement, a fingerprint, may be enough to convict a man. Or it may be the only thing to prove a suspect innocent. Police do their work to ensure that as far as possible, men live according to the law, a law which holds for everyone, a law which seeks to guarantee that people may live with some measure of security and peace. from the granite club. Hello, a fire coming Hello, from the chimney. The fire department was notified. This came from the bell telephone operator. A fire coming Motor from the chimney. Clearing. Well, I haven't heard anything else about it, so I imagine it's all right. We haven't gotten Motor the fire clearing. Clearing. Fire up. But fire coming from the chimney, I was just wondering where else you'd expect it to come from. This is a Fort Myers dispatcher. Did you have the uh, station set a tow truck down here? Give me 320 minutes. 431 Palmerston, 431 Palmerston, two disorderlies in the great car, blowing the horn to finish the 12-18. 